Hello, this is Team 14318, the BioBots, and we'll be going over how to fix the Creality Ender 3 V2 Pro Extruder Feeder. So the Extruder Feeder can be seen right over here, and in our case, we ours broke. I'm not completely sure why, but it's just this little part here. As you can see on the very edge, it snapped. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is just slide off the spring for our, in our case, it was just loose. And right behind it is this little part, which you also want to extrude or take off. And then next, what we're going to do is just disconnect this part, which you can simply do by just rotating if it's loose enough. Um, th with Creality, they come with a wrench, so they, if it's too tight, loosen it with the wrench. Otherwise, you can just use your hand. And then you should pull out the filament like so. And then the next thing you want to do is go to the side. In our case, I've already unplugged it, but this connector will go to the motor of the extruder, so you can just disconnect that. All right, and for the next part, we're just going to go and get the Allen key. So, and then we're just going to start loosening screws. So the first one we'll take off is this one right here. And then we'll go and move into this screw right over there. So this one actually is a different Allen key than the one that we just used. So once you've loosened this part enough, you can just pull on this part out. For our, in our case, is broken, but otherwise you would just pull out one part. And so after this, we're gonna go to the back screws. So this is the part where you actually have to be careful because all of these screws are connected to the motor. So now we'll, we'll take into the back left, we'll loosen. And then now we're going to get this last screw in this corner. But the only issue is for this screw that there's this one blocking it. So in our case, it's preventing us from actually getting the screw out. So what you have to do is get another size Allen key and it should be the same one that you used for the longer screw and just loosen this one and take out the complete screw. Okay, so now once you're done with this step, now we have to be careful because now this whole motor is being held by this one screw. As you can see, the entire motor has moved. So in this case, I'm doing it with one hand, which I would not suggest. And just like that, the motor will slide out from the bottom. And we can take that motor, put it off to the side. And if you would like to, you can take out this black piece and you scavenged in case you want to use it. Um, but other than that, now let's get to the actual assembly of the new part. So now we'll go into the actual assembly of the next part. So I'll link what I bought below, but essentially it's a much better part that can actually be used also for a replacement or an upgrade. And actually, as you can see here, compared to the original one that you'll get with the, uh, with the Ender 3, it's actually metal. So that's a really good upgrade. Um, and so to start off, we'll take this big metal plate part and um, we'll work our way from the back. So the first thing we're going to do is um, you'll take, so in this kit, you'll also get these two screws. Um, you'll have these if you were if you already took it apart off your original one um, But if you don't have these perfect, they give you them right here and we'll start with these round head ones So you'll see there's two screws that you'll get the round head and the flat head So you get two of the round head and one of the flat head. We'll take one of the round heads and Right over here. So we'll if you see here one big distinction to know which the front of the back is first of all the placement of this part which the um, filament feeds into as well as this part back here, which as you can see, it's kind of like filleted. Um, that's where the flathead will go. But for right now, to start off, you'll see this little screw hole here. Right under is another one. Take this one and just simply slide it into that hole. So it should look something like this. Now in your kit, you'll also get one of these, which as you can see, it's kind of like a round head, as well as a screw like this, which is like, a flat kind of thicker head we'll take the round head and in that hole that's directly perpendicular to the screw we just put in you just want to go and screw that in and so for this you don't want to screw it in all the way just maybe about halfway and then the next part we'll do is you'll take this part which is where the spring was on and you just slide that onto the back part like so okay so now we've got this part done um, the last thing you want to do is take that other 
um, the s smaller screw, but not flat head, as you can see right here. And you can just put it in the front one. And so just like that, we're done with the right side. And before, uh, to get to the left side, now the first thing we want to do is take that flat head small screw and place it in that corner hole, which we were talking about right there. So it should fit completely flat. None of it should be sticking out. And now we'll just place that aside for a second and let's get to the actual arm. So this kit comes with a lot of other things. For example, this little blue clip, um, but you already have this in the Ender 3. Um, but the main thing that we're going to use is now we're going to go back to that kind of fatter head screw and we're going to take the V-bearing. Um, you probably, if you're not using a kit, you could find this on your old one. And essentially you just want to slide that in. And then on this arm, there's a part here and a part here. We want to take that little threaded hole over there and just tighten this in. You don't want to tighten it all the way. Um, make sure that the V-bearing can still move and rotate freely. So now once that's done, um, in most cases, you'll already have this part put placed in here. So don't go searching for it. But if it's not, and if it is there, you just want to slide this part into this hole. As you can see, it's snug. It's fit snugly, and you can kind of just let it fall out. Now we'll take this long screw and just slide that in there. It should fit perfectly. And now we're basically done with this part. Now we'll go back to this part, and this is basically the final part. But rather than just simply putting that on, the first thing we want to do is, right where we've put this spring part, just slide the spring on, like so. And then, now we can actually combine everything. So as you can see here, right, the spring should be kind of covering the flat hole, the flat screw part that we put in the back. Now you just want to take that screw and put it in on the last remaining hole. like so. And as you can see, now you're built, now you're completely done. And now you can tighten this spring based on however, whether the filament's feeding or not, or you can loosen that uh, screw in the back. Um, and this plays a really important role in basically dictating how resistant, how resistive you want the spring to be um, or not. So now for the last step, let's just go and mount this back on the printer. So now we're on that last mounting part, so we just want to take the part that we've made and as you can see here, you just want to slide it into the four holes and it should line up perfectly. As you can see, they've all fit in perfectly. Now you need to take your motor and put it under. As you can see, the orientation should be so that the wire part is facing outwards and you'll just put that on the bottom. And then the last step will be making sure that all the screws are screwed in. So now I've put in all the screws. One thing that you wanna make sure is actually, before you actually mount this arm part, there's that back screw that is under there. You wanna make sure that you don't put this part on, tighten that screw and then put that part on. So now everything's connected. Um, as you can see, I've actually, right there, I've pulled out the screw a bit so that the spring is less resistive. Um, and applying less force. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is start off on the side, take that wire and connect the motor as such. And then the last part you wanna do now is actually take out this part, which you can actually do just by pulling on it. I mean, just pull, well, you wanna like squeeze it and then just pull out that part. Um, first thing remember is always take out that blue inner piece and then there's a black part, as you can see here, that will come with the kit. And you just want to first slide that into the red part. And then once you slide that in, take that tubing, feed it completely in, and use that blue ring that you might already, you will have on your Creality already. But if not, it also comes in the kit. And then by putting that in, now it's completely stuck in, in place, no matter how much you try and move it. And from there, that is it. And now you can print away. So thank you for listening and let us know for any other videos you need.